Hello and welcome to the Portage Curling Club, home of the 2018 Canada Inns Women's Classic. Ken Plating along with a couple of the curlers in this year's event. We have Carrie Einerson and we have Val Sweeting from Team Einerson. Ladies, uh, we are going to be watching the matchup between Flurry and Froud. What do you guys expect of this game? Should be a good matchup. Yeah, I think it should be a really good matchup. I, uh, um, this is my uh, former team that I've played with uh, for the last five years. Um, they're a great uh, young team. And Team Flurry, or Tracy Flurry, has taken over the team. And um, no, don't know too much about uh, Team Froud. Um, but yeah, I'm sure it's going to be a great matchup. All right, we are ready a few stones into this game so far, and we see the house is clear, and so is the front of the house, so uh, no guards up. Uh, how does an end play, play out like this? Is this just a kind of a testing out end where you can kind of see where the players are, are playing against each other, see how they match up? Yeah, I think so. Just both teams getting comfortable with the ice, kind of see what it's doing out there, keep it pretty simple, and uh, I think we'll see some more rocks in play in the next end. We are still in second stones here. This is uh, Margot Fleming from Team Fla Froud. Just looking to remove the stone in the back of the 12. So it's probably going to be a pretty quiet first end here as we uh, are playing semi-final action here. Now don't forget we have more curling coming up after this game as of course we are on again at 8.30 and then tomorrow we have three draws that people can watch and we are not done curling after that. After we are done here on the Sunday, don't forget in November we will have mixed doubles here. The Canadians mixed doubles classic will be taking place. So plenty of curling action happening here in Portage La Prairie. Selena Negevin with her First rock. Nice job. Hits that one right on the nose. And they are now lying one in the back. So we did say we are on skip stones, and this is Susan Froud. She is the uh, skip on the nameplate of the back, but she is playing third for this event, and they're just testing this out to see how this plays out. So throwing skips rocks today will be Lauren Horton from Team Froud, so she will be throwing that. But uh, they told me to say before the event they are proud to be Froud, so uh, they're going to pump that out on their social media this weekend to see if they can get some more followers. <laughs> Girls, do you guys have uh, anything like that for your team? Any uh, catchy slogan? Not yet. That's a pretty good one. Yeah. We're going to have to come yeah, up with something. We don't have, uh, have anything just yet. <laughs> Selena Negevin now with her second stone of this first end. Just looking to draw one into the house. So asking the other curlers that have been here, the Five Rock Rule, how has it impacted your curling games uh, through this season? Well, I think we are pretty used to it. Um, we've played it in the slams um, a lot in the last few years. So, um, yeah, it, it hasn't really affected us too much. Um, the other two, uh, Brianne and Shannon, they haven't played it too much. Um, but, yeah, uh, Val and I have been used to it. So looking just to remove this stone here in the top of the forefoot, and they do, and a little roll. That stone is removed as well, so nothing in the house. Another opportunity just to draw one in.
So Tracy Fleury, she is new to this team this year, skipping this club. Her first stone in this very first end here. Just looking to put this one in the center of the house. Sweepers taking this one back as far as they can make it go and they are in the eight foot, so. Lauren Horton now with the opportunity just to remove this stone. Try to keep up her hammer for the next end and maybe make some magic happen. Yeah, I could see next end uh, getting into it a little bit more. Just to trying to feel this end out and get to know the ice. So simple hit and stick here. line they need this one to go and the shooter will also roll out of play so one more time to draw and this time she's going to attempt to use that back one that's just outside of the 12 foot come up to it maybe and make it a little harder for her to remove that stone yeah it's always uh, um, in the first end when you're just feeling it out it's nice to if you can get uh, a nose hit just so your opposition doesn't get that feel for draw weight before you can. But, yeah. Tracy Fleury with her last rock here of the first end attempting just to draw one right up to the one on the back of the 12 it's not quite touching a lot of swing in this ice have you noticed yeah it's been uh curling really nice and and speed's been pretty good uh, yeah can't complain about that so this rock though does not move enough and ends up going right out of place so i had that little extra weight and stayed straighter on her and uh, did not use the yellow for backing like she had hoped. So an opportunity now for Team Froud. That's Lauren Horton here throwing skip stones tonight. He's gonna nicely put one through the rings. Doesn't have to have very big weight. Last rock here of this first end. Froud against Fleury. Froud looking just to blank. And try to reset and do this all again in the second end. So, no problems there. Your score after one end to play, it is zero for Fleury, zero for Froud. We will have the second end coming up right after this. Eat. Meet. Stay. Play! Canad Inn's destination centers are your home for hospitality, with 10 locations in Manitoba and one in North Dakota, featuring the finest in accommodations, food and beverage, entertainment, banquet and conference facilities, and so much more. For the best service and best value, your only stop is Canad Inn's. Call today at one 33 canad or visit us right now at canadins.com. Welcome back from the Portage Curling Club as we get ready for end number two here between Team Flurry and Team Proud. Ken Plating along with uh, Carrie Anderson and Val Sweeting from Team Anderson. And they have the uh, 
this this draw off right now. You guys have a little bit of a break, but you guys are back in action at 8.30 tonight. Is that correct? Uh, no, we have oh. qualified A side, so we made the playoffs. Um, so our playoff game will be um, tomorrow. tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, so you guys get the night off. Oh, yeah. well, you guys can stay up here and broadcast with me all night <laughs> long then. That's the plan. <laughs> no, I'm sure you guys need your rest, and it's gonna be a big game. You guys play at what time tomorrow? 10 a.m. 10 a.m., so make sure you guys check that out. We will update the sheets for you as the games go on here. As Everybody here is just finishing up the first end to play. We're a little ahead of everybody else, so uh, in an end or two, we will let you know with what's going on. So as you can see, we finally have a rock that's up in play. It's a guard for Team Flurry. Now it's time for Team Frau to make a decision, so it looks like she'll be trying to put up either a rock in the house or a quarter guard. Yeah, I think she asked for it to go uh, just behind the T-line, just... Uh uh, keeping the play a bit for, away from the middle. Sweepers on this one hard for line. They are pushing the rock. Horton asking her sweepers to get this one right to the tee. Nice job. A great sweep on that one. That's a path that probably wasn't used in pregame practice, so it might have been a bit of a guess, and they were bang on. Team Flurry now looking to, is it to remove the stone or uh, or draw in? Yeah, looking to remove it to hit and roll to uh, the forefoot, closer to the forefoot. Nice little hit and stick. And an opportunity now for Team Frau to do the same. Now one thing we have seen on sheet six is Rocks will float out there if there's a lot of weight. They are not coming back in, and sweepers have not touched this one at all. A good job, nice hit and stick, so exactly what she wanted to play. So now Tracy uh, Flurry here will try and make the um, hit and roll into the forefoot just to make the play to the forefoot. Liz Fife with her first stone of the end. Looking for a little hit and a little roll. Has the hit, has the roll. A great shot. And that rock almost perfectly behind the guard. It's peeking out a little bit on the left side, so opportunity for Team Fried to make a decision either to throw up another corner or draw right in on top of that one because it's behind the T-line. I think uh, she'll try and make a play out, out it. Um, try and remove it from the forefoot. And if she ends up, oh, she's going to change her mind and hit and roll to a corner. So trying to remove whatever coverage they have in front. Some nice weight on this rock. She will get a good piece of it. Hits, but doesn't quite roll where she wants to. That's a good result. Um, you want to roll a little bit further out, but um, yeah, now Tracy will just uh, come around this one and try and put one boat, probably top eight. So an opportunity here to draw another one into the house. Sweeper's on this one for line. This rock will move at the end. Still got a good chance. 
Just a little kiss. This one rolls into the top 12, butting the eight. Yeah, really good sweep. They almost got that by. Horton now looking to remove the blue. Perhaps even get a double. So Horton now lets that one roll over to the corner a bit. It's a really good result. It's tough to remove, and it's kind of half co partly covered by their corner there. Yeah, it'd be kind of hard for Tracy to kind of remove that one with that blue being uh, back four. Flurry looking for a draw to the eight. This is her third, Salida Negavin. This team curls out of East St. Paul, so not too far from here. Sweepers working hard to try to get this one as deep as they possibly can. Has the room on the line. Looks like it is third shot, so. Now, is she looking for the straight run back here? I think she's trying to play the double. Um, I think that's what they had indicated. This is Susan Froud in the hack, her first stone. Take this little wick of that corner. And a big opportunity for this flurry team here to either cover up the top or perhaps even, yeah, just remove that yellow and sit in good shape with three stones. Yeah, I think uh, eliminate the rocks and uh, um, hit and sit three. Second stone for Selena Negevin. Needs this rock to move a little bit more. A little hit, a little roll off to the side. That rock manages just to bite in there, so. Double and uh, eliminate some of the blue rocks. Selena Froud, her second rock of the end. Froud does have the hammer, so one, two. Does the second one come out? It doesn't. So Flurry sitting first and third shot. So. Yeah, choices here. You could go once again and remove that yellow at the top, or? Yeah, I think just uh, hitting a nose would be a, a great shot. The way this end is shaping up for Team Froud, they may have to opt for just a single. Yeah, it's looking that way right now. With a huge swing in this ice, you might see Froud come around if Tracy noses this one, but uh, not sure if she's more of a drawer or a hitter style of player, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Yep. First skip stone for Tracy Flurry. Nice stone, nice controlled weight. 
The yellow is now removed, so Flurry now sitting three in the house. Laura Horton, normally playing third, he is playing skip here tonight. This is a pretty um, tough shot with that centerline guard being there and the major swing on this ice. Yeah, I thought they might uh, play to the middle. There's a little bit more real estate to draw to you, especially in the second end. You would have played that one of those pass for in practice, but uh, nice one coming in here. Very close to making that just uh, about a foot heavy. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of space between those two stones. Looking to peel this one out. Yeah, I think uh, Tracy here is just wanting to remove that rock and just uh, sit three. So. So this is her last stone of this second end of play. Looking to peel out the yellow in the back of the eight foot. Great stone. That leaves Horton and Froud here, the decision to make. Drawing into the eight foot for one. And that's what she'll do. So a good end from Flurry putting on pressure, forcing Froud here to try to take one. Last stone here of this second end of play. Weight looks fine. She gets her one. We've played two. We have one point so far, and that is for Team Froud. When we come back, more curling action from the Portage Curling Club. But first, let's thank some of our proud sponsors here for the 2018 Canada Inns Women's Classic. And hello, welcome back to the 2018 Canada Inns Women's Classic here from the beautiful Portage Curling Club. A nice day here in Portage to La Prairie. 
Temperatures nice and warm. The curling here is red hot as we are finishing up this four day event. One more day tomorrow. Make sure you check out all the action here either on cbc.ca, look in their sports section, or you can look at Daily Emotion, or finally check out the World Curling Tours YouTube page. And you can watch any of the games that are going on here and watch some of the archives on the YouTube page of some of the past matches that have taken place. So one rock so far in play, and we have a center guard, and it looks like Flurry on the attack is going to go right in, right in behind it, not throwing up a corner guard or a rock herself. Yeah, it looks like they're going to just go right in and try and keep play to the middle, set something up that way. Great shot, gets that one top 12 and is buried. So the sweepers drug that one a long <laughs> way. Megan Arnold now with her second rock. Sweepers trying to drag this one behind that blue. And it's partially covered there in the back and the top of the forefoot, so gives Thor the opportunity to corner freeze. Job taps that yellow just a little further into the forefoot, but gets her something to promote later on in the game. Yeah, it leaves a really good angle for them to use later. <laughs> so Horton from Team Froud looking to put up a guard, blocking up some of that forefoot. on this one for weight. So looking to peel off that guard that was just put up. It's the job for Liz Fife for Team Flurry. Her first stone of the end. Skip wanted a little sweeping. Couldn't get that one done. Yeah, just kind of caught, got mm -hmm. caught in between there. I think they were trying to run it back or peel it and just comes up a bit at the end. Back off. So, so Liz can't uh, try and make that 
This is Margot Fleming with her stone. bit short. I think they would have liked that to tuck around the blue guard, but it uh, does the job nonetheless. Yeah, at least uh, fight here with a double peel, half rock double peel. Open things up a bit here. Fife with her second stone of the end. Looking to move granite in the front. Hits the top one, hits the one on the side and the shooter rolls off as a corner guard, so not a bad result for the Flurry team. So Susan Froud in the hack, she is throwing third stones tonight. Her third, which was originally written down on the paper, Lauren uh, Horton will be throwing skip stones all night long and will be calling the game. So a little bit of a team sh switch and shift. <laughs> Sweepers all over this one trying to keep it going. Trying to make it curl a little bit to get it to finish. And looks like a great guard. Negev in now with her first stone of the end. Yeah, I think they're maybe looking to run it back and kind of jiggle those blues in the house. But just going to peel it off here. It's a good shot. Proud now with her second stone of the end. They might be able to, yeah, play like a hack waiter at that blue and remove that yellow that's on the top four foot. Tracy's asking for the crowd's guard just over curled a little bit. Negative in with her second stone of the end. Sleeper's holding this one. Little tap. And that yellow. Getting pushed out. Yeah, that, that's a great shot. So Flurry now sitting two in the house and pretty well buried. So is this where the other side of the ice comes into play? Yeah, um, it might be a little bit stiffer. They haven't uh, played anything on this side, but it's looking like she's going to come around those two uh, that are in the top eight foot and uh, just go back four foot and try and bury it. Lauren Horton from Team Proud throwing her first stone. <laughs> Definitely would want a piece of the four foot in this one. You definitely want to get shot rock here. The 
the team from the Westmount Golfing Country Club in Kitchener, Waterloo. Throwing their first of two skip stones this end. Looking to find her draw weight on the right side. Ice where they haven't played a lot this end. Well, this one's looking like a great shot. Rock is coming in beautifully. Wow. And squeezes it right in there. Really well managed by the team. They, they had to wait a little bit for line, but that big curl at the end, they, they got it right in there. So the team Flurry now looking at their options. Sawa made a really nice tap uh, against two to, uh, to score one. It was a really great shot, really pressure shot she made. So over there on sheet seven, it's 2-1 uh, for Gim. Uh, sheet six, um, it looked like Barb Spencer um, got four in the second end. So she leads um, Holland uh, four to two. And on sheet three, uh, Lou and Koana. Koana? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, is, um, Lou is winning three nothing. They are playing the third end. Mm, thank you so much. Well, we are about to throw another skip stone here. Flurry for first of two. Has some pressure drawing skills here. Needs to tap back her blue, I think, a bit is what the game plan is. I think just making sure they get shot rock here mm -hmm. and they'll have a shot for one or two on our next one. So it doesn't look like she has shot stone, but uh, she does have some options here with her final stone if she's looking to play. Yeah, I think uh, Team Proud here is just going to eliminate uh, some of the blues out of there. Um, a hit and roll uh, behind those other two blues. Could make things very difficult for her on her next stone. Yeah, I mean, uh, it'll make uh, it a little difficult for Tracy to get in there, but there is a shot uh, if she uh, can tap her blue again. Final stone for Lauren Ho Lauren Hora, pardon me, Lauren Horton here in the third end to play. Needs to hit and do a little roll over to the inside to try to sit two. Sweepers have not really touched this one. Now they are. Nice little roll. Yeah, that was a, a great shot. That's what she called. Uh, the hit and roll just behind. So she is sitting two here. And it's going to be very difficult for Team Flurry to even get one. Tracy might be able to still get out, at, uh, get at her um, her blue there, and just tap it a little bit, and just cut them down to one. I think so. That guard's high enough, and if you could play kind of a board weight, you might might jiggle it in there enough for your one. Yeah, I agree. 
Or at least play an easy shot to limit the damage here. So we're down to one rock here in this third end of play. A very difficult one for Team Flurry as they try to scrape together one single point. Two yellows that are counters. And one blue that needs to find its way in there. than I was thinking she would play, but... Gotta get it by the guards. Here. They do. Like a great shot. So it looks like it's a steal of one here um, for Team Proud. A great shot by Tracy. She uh, cut them down. Um, it's a good pressure shot. Well, we've played Three so far, we've got five more to go. You are watching the 2018 Canadians Women's Classic here from the Portage Curling Club. Thank you. Eat. Meet. Stay. Play! can Inns Destination Centers are your home for hospitality with 10 locations in Manitoba and one in North Dakota, featuring the finest in accommodations, food and beverage, entertainment, banquet and conference facilities, and so much more. For the best service and best value, your only stop is Canad Inns. Call today at one 33 canad or visit us right now at canadins.com. And welcome back to the 2018 Canad Inns Women's Classic here from the Portage Curling Club. Ken Plating along with uh, the skip from Team Anderson, Carrie Anderson, and Val Sweeting, the third from the same team. And you ladies, of course, have the evening off. You're here with me up in the broadcast booth, the Tavern United broadcast booth. And uh, what do you think so far after we've played three ends of play? Well, there's been lots of great shots made. We saw a simple end in the first. Team's just getting comfortable. And then uh, a little bit more rocks in play in the second end, but uh, a lot more in the third. I think the teams are settling in now, getting comfortable. And I think we're, we're in for another good end here. So we start off with the rock right in the forefoot here on this end. And Flurry looking to what I believe is going to be a... I think it's going to be a quarter guard. Quarter guard, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you see the ice and you don't see that initial movement, you go, yeah. corner guard or is it a takeout? I'm not sure, but... You, of, of um, course, you know, so early on you are going to throw up a curly corner guard. So Yeah, the reason why we don't really indicate because we have our um, breaks at the hog line in between ends and we kind of just discuss already what our end plan is going to be. Um, so that's why uh, the skip sometimes does not indicate where it is because they just know where it's uh, going to be. Kind of eliminate some time. And the discussion you normally would get between shots. Should I do this? Should I do that? That's now been eliminated yeah. from doing stuff like that. Usually the first uh, four shots are uh, the, the quickest. <laughs> it looks like Froud here is going to put up a tight center guard. Uh, guard the one that's in the top four or five. Cover it. It's showing likely about half of it. So another draw here. Or hit? No, it's a draw. A lot of spin on that rock. Yeah, you gotta spin them to keep the line, uh, otherwise they just kind of take off. So really good throw here. It looks like it's coming in nicely. Yeah, even on the 
this ice, even if you do have uh, that uh, big rotation, it still curls in quite nicely. Quite a bit, eh? Yeah, it's fantastic ice here. I know. So Horton here looking to throw one up in the house. Maybe top 12 or guard. Yeah, instead of chasing that one in the house, uh, she's going to throw up a guard. Uh, um, probably wants it to be a little bit higher than that so they don't make a double peel on it. I think maybe she changed her call there. I think she wants to come in and go well, top 12. It's pretty early in the end. I would maybe think about keeping them a little bit higher, force Flurry to to double peel for a little while, but coming in and sitting two also puts the pressure on, so not a bad call. Sweepers on this one for line. Looks like it's a little bit light, but that's a good result. She initially did say she wouldn't mind one on the logo mm -hmm. in the front, so not a bad shot for her, so we're now looking to peel. I think Fife here um, make this double peel and might even get the one in the house as well. Just missed the double peel. Looking for the hit and roll over, removing the corner guard. Yeah, I think she's just trying to yeah, hit and roll to a center line guard here. Open up that one that's blue in the 12 foot. And the shooter rolling much too far, so it looks like he's going to be out of play. And Flurry now looking to just sink one in there. Weight's nice. Block is yeah, starting to move. Got a really great shot here. Yellow just taps back to the back eight, just biting the four. It's a good shot. It leaves uh, Blue sitting one with a, a good angle on it. Might have been a bit of a fresh path there. The sweepers were saying they thought it was uh, back line or through, and it must have come down a little bit, but still a good result. Susan Froud looking for perhaps a hit and roll over. Instead she hits and rolls a little bit out to the outside, so once again, Flurry looking to tap back some stones. Yeah, 
Tracy just asking for the uh, same shot that Fife just played uh, with Selena's just to tap it back a bit. This one just it's hung like out there. Maybe just a little bit more weight than what uh, Fife had. So she is sitting one. A couple options here. The corner freeze, of course, always freezing up to the one in the back of the forefoot. Just uh, um, asking her third to uh, come down and uh, freeze to that uh, blue corner freeze. Keep that angle there. Get it full board. Looks like this one's just a little bit light. Sweepers could not get it there, so. Flurry now with the opportunity to do the same and try to sneak in there. Update on sheet seven. Um, Gim uh, got one, so it is three to one uh, for Gim. And on sheet six, Holland and Spencer are tied at four four. And on sheet three, it is uh, six six nothing. With the big three in the third end, so commanding lead as they play four right now. This rock once again. Weight was perfect, maybe just a little too much line. Yeah, Selena's uh, just ran a little bit straighter than what they were thinking. She had great weight on both of them, but uh, still, still early in in the fourth end, playing some new pass, still learning that, and both good results on her shots. Four rocks remaining in this fourth end. Flurry sitting two right now and Horton trying to remove the shot stone and perhaps sit shot rock. What kind of weight do you see on a shot like this? Back 12? Well, I don't think she wants to bump it that far. Um, if she only bumps it like a boat a foot and sits right in front of it, um, it'll leave uh, Flurry with a bit of a, a difficult shot to try and remove it. Yeah, the key is getting the line, at least getting to nose or a little bit inside roll here will be, will be key for the team and it'll be in a good spot. Looks like she has a little bit of weight. This could jam. It does jam on the back yellow. So there are three blues counting second, third, and fourth shot rock. So Flurry here may have a big end here if she can figure out a way how to get rid of that rock and the forefoot biting the button. Yeah, they got a little fortunate that that blue spilled back. Uh, provides a little bit of backing, a little bit more difficult to get rid of her shooter there. But... Uh, even if Tracy makes a double and clips that on the way by, they're still sitting in good shape for, for three. Yeah, I think on crowds there, maybe just a little less weight, uh, just to just tap it back to the back four. Um, 
but uh, she ended up being in a decent spot. So I think Tracy's just looking to pick it out. So it's the East St. Paul skip. Tracy Fleury with her first of two skip stones here in the fourth end of play. Looking to just tap out this yellow in the forefoot. Weight is high, so she is going to perhaps do some damage if she hits it on the wrong way. She hits it on the high side, removes it, nudges the one in the back, but still sits three. That was a great shot by Tracy. So Lauren Horton now, her last stone. Looking to hit and just roll over, back over on top of that blue one. Yeah, I think so. Uh, if they happen to make the double and force Flurry to two here, I think that would be a win. Uh, but yeah, if she can hit and roll right on top there, it'll be a tough, tough deuce for Tracy. Last rock here for Lauren Horton from Team Froud. Wanting to hit and stick here. Little roll on the inside would be great. Gets a hit, gets a roll, but rolls right by. And that leaves Blue sitting two and an opportunity to put a third one in there and take a three to two lead here after four ends of play. Got caught right in the middle there between the, the hit and roll and the double. And just, just went over top. Last rock here of this fourth end to play. Chance to draw for three. Looking like a great shot. Sweepers are just cleaning it. Nice draw weight. Beautiful draw weight. She's got it right on the button. And we have three points. We've played four. We've got four to go. You're watching the 2018 Canadiens Women's Classic live from the Portage Curling Club. We couldn't do this, though, without some of our proud sponsors, so we'll take a few moments to thank them. And welcome back from the Portage Curling Club. They are starting uh, end number five. But first, we're going to do a quick update on all the sheets. I'm going to pass it over to Val Sweeting. Val? On sheet three, we have uh, Team Lou versus Team Kona. And Lou's uh, still up 6 nothing, but uh, Team Kona trying to generate some, some rocks in play. And moving over to sheet six, it's a great game between ha Holland and Spencer. We were seeing a lot of rocks in play, and we're still tied 4-4. And over to sheet seven, we have Gim and Fujisawa. 
Uh, two teams battling for the, the B qualifier there. A lot of rocks in play over there as well. And we're 3-1 for Gim. All right, in our sheet here, we have a 3-2 score for Team Flurry over Team Froud. And we are in the fifth end of play. Froud now will get the hammer this end, so her opportunity to try to get her deuce. Chip the top rock. And then they end up with a uh, corner guard and a uh, very far corner guard, so not too bad for them. <laughs> Kristen McCush. Really good result there opening up the center. Sure, the Gordon now looking to put one into the 12 foot behind one of her rocks. About five and a half feet of curl on these stones as we let go of them for a draw. So plenty of movement. Yeah, I think she's looking to come around to her tight uh, yellow there. Corner. And most curlers would agree that it's fun to play with uh, ice that moves that much. Yeah, it is. Um, you definitely can't hide. <laughs> you have to have those tight guards. Sweeper's working hard on this one for line. Line's great. Just got to get this one to keep moving as far as it can. Perfect T-line weight, but just didn't move enough for them. That rock is fairly visible and gives them an opportunity to hit and roll behind their center guard. Liz Fife, the second for Team Flurry. Sweepers on this one now. Nice hit, nice roll, but doesn't kind of move enough. Probably need about another foot more. Yeah, it would be nice to get right behind our center line guard. Um, but that's still a great shot. Team Proud here is going to try and uh, um, hit and roll to the corner, but it looks like it's curling up. And just it. That was Margot Fleming there with her first of two stones. Opportunity now for Fife to do a nice little hit and roll and move over behind that center line guard. This rock floating out there. Starts to make its move now. A little roll. Really good weight control there to get that little hit and roll. Didn't 
Looks like Froud's going to hit and roll to, uh, to their yellow corner, keep the play again away from the middle. Margot Fleming, her second stone this end. Has a nice piece. The shooter will just barely. Just hit, hang around yep. for a biter. This gives Fleury a couple options. Do you draw behind now or do you remove that stone? It looks like she's gonna remove it, but I think I think I would uh, maybe uh, come around the center line. Uh, you got a really nice tight guard there. Um, but it looks like Tracy's just going to hit this one out um, out of play and eliminate the yellows. I don't mind the call. They have a one-point lead, and uh, with the big swing in the ice, if you're not perfectly buried, they might, might leave the other team a shot for two. But uh, we'll see if they get a chance to use that center guard later in the end. Shooter rolls to the back of the 12 foot. <laughs> so looking at a draw. I like this call. There's a little bit more room to uh, sit shot rock rather than using their tight tight one over on the other side. This guard's a little bit, although it's the opposition's rock, it's a little bit higher, so a little bit easier to get around. Susan Froud with her first of two third stones. This one hard for line. Beautiful shot if they can drag it all the way in. Get this one top 12. That was a really great brush. Um, and they, uh, right from end, right as soon as she let it go, it was a great brush, just not quite uh, shot rock. So Fleury looking at her options right now. So thinking, just ignoring that yellow on the top, which would be very hard to get at. Thinking rather just go play a draw and come around her center line guard. I like this call. Um, come around, uh, sit second shot, right top four. Put that pressure on. They played this path in the third end, so I think they'll be pretty close on this. Selena Negevin now with her First, pardon me, her second stone. It's got lots of room. Question is, is wait, how far will it go back? So that finishes in the back, eight foot. Lines first and second shot rocks. A little, little deep there. I think ideally she would have wanted that in the top four. Keeps play away from that other yellow one in the ring, so still good. Crowd now with the opportunity to draw one in. Looks like it has a little bit more line. It's not quite uh, curling. There it goes now. Rock's starting to move now. Oh, look at that big movement in the ice. The weight Great was shot. almost perfect. Mm -hmm. So great shot by Team Froud. They're now shot stone and at least three with the option to follow suit. Now, do you play a little bit heavier weight here and try to tap it out a little bit, or do you just freeze right up to it? I think the freeze is good here. Um, 
the thing you can't do is is chop off on the wide side because you'll leave Froud a good opportunity to sit too. So I think uh, if just play the freeze here and if line's good, they might bump it a little bit. But I don't think they have to because that rock's already behind the two line. Flurry now. The first stone of the end. So it's all about weight. Now they say it's for line, so they are pushing this rock. Starting to curl a lot. Will it get by the guard? It will. As far back as they can get it. It took a really sharp turn about halfway down the sheet, almost like it maybe grabbed something. I don't think they were worried out of her hand. So Froud now looking to bring another stone into the house. Still a good opportunity to get her two, possibly three. Um, yeah, she's uh, set up right, right now uh, pretty good. If she can uh, half bury one in here, uh, sit top four, um, and put some pressure on Tracy to, uh, to eliminate uh, those yellows. Lauren Horton, her first of two skip stones ascend. Looking to follow suit and put a rock in the forefoot. So the line is good. They're just looking at this one for weight. Looks like a really great shot here. Perfect weight, perfect shot, freezes her yellows together. Really good judge there from the brushers to put that in the right spot. What to do, what to do in this situation. They might be able to chase the yellows there. Uh, we saw that similar type of shot in the third end where Tracy was in a similar position. So I think they'll have a good idea of what the ice is doing and they might be able to at least get rid of one of the yellows. Looking for a little tap from the front rock. Last rock here for Tracy Fleury from the East St. Paul Curling Club. one for line. A little tap would be perfect. Sweepers get it by the blue. A little tap but not quite enough and it's hard to tell if she's second shot. It is close. Yeah that's really close. I'm not quite sure who shot there. Um, be good if we could oh. zoom in just a little bit here just to take a look. <laughs> There, see, when you ask, sometimes you receive here. <laughs> there you go. You can see. Oh, it's looking. My miss might be yellow. Yeah, it could very well be yellow. So it is close, as you can see here. But that was a great shot by Tracy. Just, uh, uh, just a touch more weight would have been second shot. So there's really not much room there, as you can see on that side of the ice, on the 
broadcast right side. And there's really nowhere to play on the broadcast left side. So the question is, which way do you play this to try to get a three? I think you should probably just take the two right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So looking at the line that she's playing here, what would you say she's doing? I think she's trying like a redirect and try to push the blue out. <laughs> they were around that wide yellow one, I think, trying to come off of it into the middle. It's a little bit scary <laughs> as you're already sitting your two. I agree with Carrie. You might want to take your two and run here. But uh, they see a shot for three, so they're going to give it a go. Well, a chance to jump ahead in this game and take a commanding two-point lead going into end number six. They have two right now. The question is, will it remain that way at the end of this shot? Unless they don't think that their second shot may be, and I, I think maybe yeah. they don't feel they are. And the, posi this. the position of our camera may not quite yeah. tell the exact truth, so... Lauren Horton with the last rock here of the fifth yeah. end. Trying to get a piece of that yellow and wick in. Oh, she's really close one. to this. One. Oh. Jams. And yeah. it's just one. We'll never know. For the Frau team, we we'll will never know. know. Never be able to measure, so uh, that's okay. <laughs> it's one point for Team Frau. We are tied up after five ends of play. You are watching the 2018 Canada Inns Women's Classic Live from the Portage Curling Club. We'll be back in just a few moments. Eat. Meet. Stay. Play! Canad Inn's destination centers are your home for hospitality, with 10 locations in Manitoba and one in North Dakota, featuring the finest in accommodations, food and beverage, entertainment, banquet and conference facilities, and so much more. For the best service and best value, your only stop is Canad Inn's. Call today at one 33 canad or visit us right now at canadins.com. Well, we have played five ends, and we have three more to go here at the 2018 Canada Inns Women's Classic. Great evening for curling here. If you've got nothing to do in the Portage area, come on out and watch some of the action. We will be getting, uh, we'll be playing another draw tonight around 8.30 p.m., so there'll be lots to watch there. And uh, we are tied up here after five ends of play at three apiece. With me tonight in the broadcast booth, the Tavern United broadcast booth, that is, Carrie Einerson and Val Sweeting from Team Einerson. Of course, they curl out of Gimli, Manitoba, and they've got the evening off, so they have the opportunity to sit with me here in the booth and call some of the game. So yeah, thank you so much. The first time we've done this. <laughs> <laughs> We're newbies at this. That's okay. <laughs> so we already have a rock in play in the uh, eight foot, so. And it looks like Tracy just called to uh, hit and roll to uh, the edge of the 12. And for a bit of an update, um, on sheet 7, um, Fujisawa got two in the, the fourth end to tie it up against uh, Gim. And on sheet 6, it, oh, they didn't uh, put up the score, but they were measuring for, um, for one point there. And on sheet three, it is six to one uh, for Lou. So it looks like the skips are just playing a very quiet sixth end here. Yeah, it looks like they might have this end a little bit open. Tracy might call for corner, yeah. <laughs> now that the rock is kind of over a little bit, not in an uh, ideal spot uh, where she can't end up scoring. So. That's the fun part about uh, everything being the five rock grill now is seeing the different plays that teams are doing. You'll see some throw the corner right away. Others play that hit first. and uh, So just kind of learning the best way to generate your points and, and avoid the steals in this, this crucial sixth end. So 
So we do now have a corner guard. Looks like a uh, team Froud here is going to put up a tight uh, center line guard. Keep that play to the middle and uh, keep it away from that corner um, corner guard of uh, team Flurries. Margot Fleming here with her first stone of the end. looking to remove the yellow in the top 12. Wouldn't be disappointed if they hit the guard though either. Hit a bit of an outside roll. That was a great shot by uh, this fight. So only a couple of sheets here that have cameras, but we will cut back and forth from this point on if there's something exciting happening on sheet six between Holland and Spencer. And they're getting pretty close here. To, what, seven rocks left. So we may jump into their game for just a few moments just to see how the final stones play out. There's three uh, really tight games happening out here. The Lou Kuana game, though, that's a little bit more of a, uh, a lopsided score. It is 6-1 to one after four ends of play. They're finishing up the fifth there. We saw some big comebacks earlier in the last draw, so you never know. You never know. <laughs> True enough. discussing yeah. if they should uh, uh, get rid of that uh, center line guard and roll to another corner or come around that corner. I think that one being so high makes it a little bit difficult to uh, try and get around that uh, blue corner. Hit and roll, removing the center line guard is the game plan. Liz Fife, second rock of the end here. It's got the weight. Rock is starting to move now. Got a nice piece. The back one in. The other one rolls into the center, so a good opportunity here for the Froud group to perhaps cover that one up. Yeah, that was a little unfortunate uh, on Liz's. It looked like a great shot coming down, but uh, yeah, and well, it looks like uh, Froud might just get rid of that corner. All right, so. Horton now, deciding to guard this one up. So just in front of the 12 foot is the game plan? I think so, yeah, just uh, 
Somewhere tight guard so they can't get around it and tap that yellow out. Susan Froud with her first rock of the end. Tracy Fleury trying to decide what to do here. You guys all like that? My thought was Theo. Yeah, I just don't want to stop it. And even if you make it, they're going to come around and be in the forefoot. Okay, Theo's Theo. I elected to go with the peel. They were a little bit worried about jamming that one in the house, but uh, good, good call here. Keep it open. Oh. Selena Negevin. That's her first stone and a nice peel up front. That leaves the Froud foursome the opportunity to repeat the same shot. Yeah, I think uh, Froud here is just going to replace that guard. the guard and now maybe uh, Tracy can see a little piece of it and maybe chase it. Negevin now with her second shot of the end. This one for line. Close. Got a beauty of a shot. Nice a roll. Shot. Really good sweep there for them to get that one by. On the replay here, you can see just squeaks by the guard and a beautiful roll over to the 12 foot. Yeah, that was a great shot by Selena. Just a few moments, we're going to move over to sheet number six to show the final skip rock there. Holland still has one more stone, and then we'll watch Spencer's final stone here on sheet number six. Here's going to try and hit and roll to the middle. Oh. Mm, couldn't quite hold that one out on the wings. Yeah, I think maybe she just kind of got a little tighter path and it just over curled on her. Looks like Flurry's going to come around and uh, sit uh, top eight foot and uh, put that pressure on Team Froud. 
A yeah, key draw here from Tracy. She's going to want to keep this in the in the top part of the house, but not too high, so it acts as a guard for the other team. But uh, Tracy's been drawn really well this game, so I think she's going to be really close on this one. Tracy Fleury now. The opportunity to put one into the rings. Looks a little bit heavy, but it looks like it's coming down a bit here. They're going to take it back. Good heads up from the sweepers there. They knew it was a little bit deeper than they wanted it to be, so they took it took it back far enough to leave room leave room to score here. options here. She can uh, either play the freeze right down to um, the Tracy's uh, last rock uh, or she can maybe look at playing that double or the hit and roll to eliminate their stones. And Horton has had good draw weight so uh, a freeze is very a very good move here in this case. Yeah, last end she made uh, two uh, um, nice draws to, or one, sorry, Nice draw to the forefoot there, so she knows her draw weight. What would you play here, Skipper? Well, <laughs> knowing me, I'd probably play the double. <laughs> um, then with that one, you have a little bit of other options. Uh, you can make the double or you can play the hit and roll. Um, also, uh, making a perfect freeze, it, it, it's a tough shot. So. The double does eliminate the possible of a three in the end, so there is that positive there. But yeah, you definitely don't roll. want to give up three here in the sixth end. Unfortunately, we could not show you the draw. Uh, sorry, the end between Spencer and Holland. It was a two-point score for Spencer, so they are leading this one by a score of six to five. Three ends to go. So last rock here for Lauren Horton of Team Froud. Hoping for the double, but at least hit and roll for one would be great. Gets one, gets a bit of a roll. Yeah, really good sweep there to, to hold that one and still get the roll. So Tracy Fleury down to her final stone here. Has the, still has a good chance to get her two if she can come around. So do you play the come around in turn out turn? What's the best solution here? <laughs> uh, I'm, pu I'm putting you on the on the uh, hot seat, ladies. So uh, come on I'm here. I'm left-handed, so I would definitely have an advantage <laughs> on the turn they're looking at here. But the big swing, I think it's there both ways. This way looks a little bit more natural. Uh, it's a, a little bit less overburied as opposed to the other turn. Though the problem with this is if you hang out there, the jam is there, jamming on your own blue and, and giving up a one. Yeah, that would, yeah, that would be a disaster. Definitely possible. Uh, but we've seen this with uh, Selena's as well, um, with her, um, her shot on her last. So, uh, yeah, I, I could 
they know the line for this shot. This is kind of what my gut was, but <laughs> um, to throw the intern, um, once it gets to that line, it really curls, and she just needs to tap it a, a couple inches. So. so still some discussion about this shot, what to play. Tracy did just throw this turn as well, so that's what Selena's saying. They, they're familiar with it too, so good to weigh the options here. At least I think playing the intern, um, you do have a better chance of scoring here. Um, because then if you're playing the out turn, uh, if you hit anything high side, you have to be absolutely per perfect if you're playing that out turn. We do know the rocks will curl. She did say she's playing back eight weight, so the rock yeah. will still move quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good weight selection for this shot. You can't throw too much or it'll just hang and, and not get the line you need. Final rock here in end number six. Tracy Fleury looking to come down and just tap that yellow in the forefoot out of the rings. Sweepers on this one hard right out of the hack. Hard for line. It is moving. Got to get it by that yellow in the front. They're holding it. Is it going to be enough? Is it going to be enough? No, it's going to wick. It's a steal of one here in end number six. Team Froud leading this one by a score of four to three. Well, we've got two more ends to play, so don't go anywhere when we come back. More action from the 2018 Canada Inns Women's Classic here at the Portage Curling Club. And welcome back to the Portage Curling Club for all the action here of the 2018 Women's Classic. The play-by-play uh, -play and color commentators here, they're, they're doing selfies here beside me. i got to straighten them out, tell them about broadcast <laughs> rules here, ladies. They're having a good time up here. But they're doing their first time, and they're doing a fantastic job. Thank you so much, Val Sweeting. And I have Carrie Anderson with me of Team Anderson. They are playing tomorrow, so... They've qualified on the A side, so you guys get a night off on a Saturday night. Isn't that nice? Yeah, it's been a nice day off. <laughs> uh, in Calgary, we took the long route into the playoffs. We played through the C and played a total of 10 games that weekend. So we've definitely paid our dues, and we're happy to, to get a little bit of a break today. Yeah, we're, uh, we're off to uh, Truro, Nova Scotia. Um, we leave Monday afternoon so uh, get home tomorrow night and wash our clothes and pack them again. <laughs> So Froud already opting to put a rock in the front of the house and Flurry is going to try to follow suit and suck one into the forefoot if she can. Need this one for a line. Sweeper's working hard on it. Nice line. It's going to curl now. You'll see this rock really make a turn and probably pop out on the other side just a little bit. It's popped out a little bit there. Uh, but uh, great wave by uh, Chris McCush. I think crowd here is just going to uh, freeze right onto uh, right onto that blue corner freeze strip. Now this is the second season this team has played together, so they know each other quite well. But a little different on the Flurry team. Of course, Flurry just 
uh, coming in to uh, that, that team with her other three teammates who've played together. So a little bit different for, for her, learning her other curlers. Yeah, but that's for sure. For yourselves, you guys are also fairly new, aren't you? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we're, all, uh, we're all a new team here and uh, new positions as well. So. How hard is that to make that transition back to a different one? We watched uh, Mike McEwen last week. Uh, throwing skip stones with playing the thirds role during the game and of course Reed Crothers calling the game and playing third stone so it's got to be a bit of a transition when, you, when you're switching up like that. Yeah it, it has been but uh, I think it's been easier we're all kind of in the same boat and we've all really just owned it and accepted our and embraced our new positions and I think that that helps for sure and just like Carrie, Carrie's doing a great job of keeping us all in line. So <laughs> it's been been fun so far. It looked like uh, uh, Kristen there was just playing a bit of a bumper weight shot and it just over curled a little bit and uh, took the center line guard. Margot Fleming now in the hack. It's a little bit different of a dynamic too with Tracy being in a different province. Um, so it's, they think uh, they meet up at events and uh, they get some practicing, get to know each other and they've had a good season so far. So they're, working well together yeah they did really well in Calgary um, last or two weeks ago um, they lost the semi-final to Jennifer Jones great week there Liz Fife now her second, or her, pardon me, her first stone at the end. Looking to remove the yellow. Just tap it back a little bit. And this one needs it for line. You can see it's starting to make its move right now in that yellow top guard. It's close, but no, looks like she'll get it. Oh, just a wick. Promotes the blue a little in the forefoot. Team Proud here is going to put up another center line guard. Trying to uh, um, force Tracy here to one, I think, instead of hitting that blue and giving her an opportunity to, uh, to blank an end. Fleming now with her second stone. Nice guard for the fraud foursome. Yeah, might have left a little bit tempting of a port, but let's see what they like to do here. They say they see enough of that one, so. Yeah, I think they're going to give the port a whole. Uh, <laughs> the, the whole a chance here <laughs> and uh, if they clip clip the two guards that'll be a good result as well no damage here here hitting anything preferably though the one in the house yeah and if not preferably the guard that's on the center line and she's on the guard gets the second guard as well so nice job there and the shooter rolls off to the side it's a good shot, really opens up the middle. So Fleury looking to try to keep this one as clean as possible. 
come home with the hammer and a possibility of getting her deuce there and a win. Mm -hmm. I actually don't mind this. Um, for an update on sheet three, uh, looks like Kona is uh, crawling back. She uh, pulled off two steals and uh, five and six, so it's a six three uh, score over there playing. Susan Froud here with her first stone. Two yellows side by side. And looking to remove it all. That's what Flurry's plans are. So Selena Negevin. Tracy just asking uh, Selena here to uh, make this uh, crotch double. Get rid of those two yellows. Weight has to be pretty big as she rolls from one to the other. Sweepers haven't really touched this one too much, but it's one and just bumps the second one. So sitting second shot right now. Susan Froud with the opportunity to hit the blue in the top four and sit two once again. It's a hit and a stick and the two yellows come Closer together, so an opportunity here now for Flurry to remove them both. Yeah, not where they would have wanted to roll to there. They might have. Watch the roll, Liz. Selena will be, might get close to rolling under that corner as well. Really good setup shot here. Opportunity now, Negevin, her second shot of the end. And Holland on sheet number six with a big opportunity here to hit and stick for three on her shot. That's on sheet number six. Here's the replay on that one. You see right on the nose and still manages to get a good chunk of the second shot. Yeah, it didn't quite uh, remove that uh, second yellow out there. She's just looking to um, to hit this one on the nose. And no mistake by Amber Holland over there. Hits it on the nose, sticks around, and gets her three. So she'll be up uh, eight to six now, playing the seventh end. Another opportunity for three over on sheet seven. Uh, Gim was trying to come around a pair of rocks in the top of the four. Just rubbed off and might have left a little tap here for Fujisawa for three. Yeah, I was looking over on that sheet too. A uh, few rocks in play and it was a very tough draw for, uh, for Gim. Um, and now uh, it just left this, uh, this shot for three for uh, Fujisawa to go up one. So that back stone and the 12 foot causing a lot of problem right now for Team Flurry. Yeah, they would have really liked to get that out earlier. 
we'll see what Tracy can either roll over there or roll under the guard and try and salvage either a deuce or a blank out of this. They won't want to get forced here. Yeah, it looks like they're going to uh, change gears here and try and go for their uh, deuce now. Skips deuce. And over on sheet seven, a uh, great shot by Fujisawa. They were chasing the rock in the back. They thought they were rolling out, but it spun back in the last second and picked up three. So they go up one, six, five, playing the seventh end. Yeah, that was a, a real tricky one. It looked <laughs> like it was going out no problem, and it just kept caught that pebble and spun one back. <laughs> yep. So Horton now with the opportunity to hit and stick for two. And put the pressure on Flurry with her final shot to score a single. Final storm, st uh, stone for Horton here in this seventh end. Looking just to hit and stick. Does not want to roll over too far. Great shot. And she is sitting two. Well, that looked like a pretty routine shot, but it is key that she stuck around on there to keep the force on. Uh, they didn't want to let Flurry get out of that end. Also forces Tracy to a draw path we haven't seen in a little while here. And sometimes in the seventh end, you'll see the ice change a little bit. But uh, she has to hit full eight here, so I think she'll be pretty close. Final stone here of the seventh end. Tracy Fleury just looking to draw one into the eight foot, just getting a piece of it is all she really needs. Skippers are really going on this one. They need this one for weight. She's got to get a piece of the eight foot here. Oh, it's Lena's coming in. Everybody's in on this one. Oh, yeah, it's there. What a there. great brush. Well, we are all tied up after seven ends of play. We have one end to go, and the hammer is switching. You are watching the 2018 Canada Ends Women's Classic live from the Portage Curling Club. Eat, meet, stay. Canada Ends Destination Centers are your home for hospitality, with 10 locations in Manitoba and one in North Dakota, featuring the finest in accommodations, food and beverage, entertainment, banquet and conference facilities, and so much more. For the best service and best value, your only Thanks, stop Steve. is Canad Inns. Call today at one 33 canad or visit us right now at canadins.com. Welcome back to the Portage Curling Club. We are down to the final end here, unless we go to extra. Eighth end, we are tied up at four. Flurry and Froud. Froud will now have the hammer going into this final end. So we'll see how this turns out and see how the skips play offense in this end. Now, if you're Flurry, what's your thought? Do you play for the uh, for the win right now? Do you play pretty aggressive to the center line? Um, yeah, well, you ha uh, Flurry uh, has to steal here, so we're going to have to uh, get lots of rocks in play, get in uh, some center line guards and get some rocks in really great spots. So we'll see a uh, few rocks and draws here in play for Team Flurry. Would you be better off to be throwing up guards as much as you possibly can at this point? Yeah. Because of the free guard zone? Yeah. And you want to keep uh, as much distance between your center line um, and your tight guard as possible. 
uh, so you don't leave that double peel. It looks like Team Proud here is going to uh, try the tick. <laughs> Megan Arnold, the lead from Team Froud. Does not want to remove the stone because of the free guard zone. It's looking pretty close here. Beautiful tick. Great shot. Really good shot. Moves that over. Almost gets her shooter well out of the way. Leaves the drop path open in case Skipper needs it. And really good shot. Once again, Flurry calling for another guard. They'll want to put this in a slightly different spot so that the other lead doesn't have the exact same shot she just played. Yeah, maybe change it up a little bit and put it a little bit more on the other side of the center line. Yeah. Sweepers are really working on this one. That rock did not make it over. So, golden opportunity now for Froud to draw one in behind some cover or put up some cover. I like the call of going in here. They, they don't need any guards. I think that just helps the other team. Just need to keep the path open for their last one. So electing to go in here. It's good to have one in the rings in case they need to hit on their last one. They won't need to stick around. Yeah, I think on this one, you want to make sure you're in the house. Um, you don't want to come up light here. You need to put up some kind of guards. You just need to keep the path open. Flurry looking to go back to the center line again. Liz Fife with her first stone of the end. Lots of good sweeping going on in this game. Uh, big curl is nice, but that also means you're, you're sweeping a lot of rocks and <laughs> either holding them straight or finishing them. And so really good brush there to take that as far as they could. Yeah, that's for sure. Having uh, such a uh, major swing on the ice, it, uh, it's definitely a lot of sweeping uh, happening. Looks like Team Proud here is going to go for a peel. Guard here. This is Margot like Fleming. Over curling. Oh, yeah. no, never mind. <laughs> I'm on a funny angle. <laughs> so Kelly Anderson and Val Sweeting with me in the broadcast booth here, the Tavern United broadcast booth. Live Carrie from Anderson, sorry. Car it's just a, <laughs> it's for, just a slip, just uh, going back in time. Um, Now you guys have thrown me completely off. i got to think about what I'm going to say now. <laughs> <laughs> Joining us in the booth. Oh, boy, oh, boy, it's been a long day already. Well, thanks for having us up here. We're really enjoying our commentating debut. Having a good time here at the, the Canadians. We, we love this spiel. It's just such a great setup with the hotel attached to the rink. It's been beautiful outside, so we've went outside for a walk and stuff, but... Our nice Manitoba winters, if it wasn't, we could not have to go outside all day. And there is a lot of travel that you guys do. You guys, like you said, you're off again to Nova Scotia this week. Yes. So um, it, it, a lot of the events that you guys go to, do you guys end up having to do a lot of travel back and forth from the curling club back to the, the hotel and stuff like that? That must wear on you from time to time, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. Um, 
for sure. You definitely want to uh, get your rest in between games and uh, all your travel. And even when you're at home, you want to make sure you're getting your rest and uh, also spending that quality time with family and friends as well. Yeah, we've seen a lot of family here this week. I uh, saw Liz's daughter running around up here, and your two daughters are here. I wish my son could have made the trip, but it's a little bit further coming. Uh, I'm out in Edmonton, so it's a little bit further for, for him to come here. Yeah, it's always nice to play close to home where you can uh, have your family and friends uh, come and watch. In Calgary, uh, Val's family got to make it out, which was nice to, uh, to meet them as well. How hard is it for curlers like you that have split teams from two different provinces to get together and practice from time to time? And this happens quite a bit with a lot of the teams nowadays. Is it just when you guys play uh, at, at events like this that you guys get the chance to practice as a team and play as a team? Or do you guys spend that quality time before the season starts? Yeah, we threw a little bit together over the summer. Um, once uh, Odin Morris, they had their ice in throughout the summer and then Edmonton has their ice in pretty early. So. Uh, yeah, the key with new players, new positions, was getting some practice time in early. Uh, since the season has started, we've played a lot of events. Um, we got probably more games in than we needed to, and, but uh, it's been really good and really important to help develop those different roles. So right now it's just, just at events that we're practicing, but that's kind of how the schedule has worked out so far. Yeah, I think yesterday we were trying to figure out how many games we played, and I think it's like just over 40 games. Yeah, 40, 40 on the nose, I think, so far. And the season has just begun, so you have a long way to <laughs> yeah, go. It's the middle of October. <laughs> yeah. Fleury just still attempting to put up some center line guards, and Horton happy just to remove them time and time again, so. I think it's been key though, um, like I said, we're adjusting to new positions and we're also kind of on the bubble of, of some of the uh, the events, so we, we've had to play a lot early and we've positioned ourselves really well now, so can take a little bit of a breather, I think, going forward. Another nice peel. And we are quickly running out of stones here. Yeah, it looks like Tracy's going to try and use this uh, corner guard here and uh, get a rock in the house. Tracy now with her first of two stones. It's a little tight. Trying to bury one. Okay, we're crossing early. Okay, okay, yeah, it looks hot. Rock with a lot of weight on it. Yeah, it seems to be running a little bit, but it's coming down. Yeah, she just has to be buried here and hang on at the back. She does that, so. It's also uh, nice, like for us. To, if it wasn't for our sponsors, for our, uh, mm -hmm. um, sponsoring us teams, um, we wouldn't uh, be able to do what we love. So we really uh, um, love that they have our support. Or we have their support, so it's really nice to uh, to have such great, wonderful sponsors. Lauren Horton. Throwing skip stones here for Team Froud. Looking to follow suit and trail the blue rock that's in the back 12. Freeze up to it. Or at least use her quarter guard to her advantage. Just 
Sweeper's on it right away. Oh, Sweepers seem to like this one. It's, it's curling quite a bit. Can use the blue for backing if she's a little heavy, but it looks like the weight is just about perfect. Yeah, looks like a great shot, great draw weight she's had all game. Right above the tee, so a perfect shot here. Flurry's looking for a little bit of a hit and roll. So Flurry looking to remove the yellow, roll over to the right side of the screen, sit her two and hope for a miss here by the Froud Foursome. Swept the wrong and cleaned the wrong rock. <laughs> Happens, I guess, yeah, from time does. to time. It does. <laughs> Final stone for Tracy Fleury in this eighth end. Looking for a little hit and roll with some bumper weight. Line needs a good chunk. Nice job. And look at this, Horton just ignoring that rock completely, just going to go for the draw and the win. Yeah, it shows how confident she is in her draw weight, and rightfully so. She's made them all. Uh, great roll by Tracy, though, shrinks the scoring area a little bit, forces her to touch a piece of the forefoot. Well, this will be the last rock of this game as Horton opts to draw for the win. The Waterloo team here with a chance to draw to the edge of the forefoot for the win. Sweepers are confident on weight. Negavin's going to try to sweep this one out. Looking a little sliding. She looks like she's got it. Back of the four. It's there. We've got a win. Great draw by, uh, yeah. by Froud there. Well, Laura Horton throwing skip stones today. Has her weight perfect almost all day long. Ladies, that's what we call a nice finish to this game. Comes right down to the final rock. You're watching Team Froud against Team Flurry. Froud with the 5-4 to four victory here on the final rock of the 8th end for Val Sweeting, Carrie Anderson, <laughs> and uh, myself, Ken Plating. Thank you so much for joining us for the 2018 Canada Inns Women's Classic Live from the Portage Club. We're going to give you a quick update really quick right now. It is 6-2. to Oh, they're putting up a score right now. Oh, it's a blank. So it is 6-3 to three for Lou over Koana. Uh, they just finished the seventh. Is yeah, they're in, they're in the eighth right now, but um, Lou is in a uh, quite a bit of trouble. <laughs> She's looking against um, three, three uh, Kona rocks, and with a center line guard up, that sheet has had to come back today. So we nope. might see another one. <laughs> I, I I thought. Remember when I did the score earlier on? I said, well, this one looks like a bit of a blowout, and you <laughs> said to me. There's still half a game left to play, and this could be the, the key to that game right there. Miss this rock, and we're all tied up. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. You and never Val's, know until it's over. Val's smiling because she's, uh, she's correcting me on that. Over up on sh uh, sheet number six between Holland and Spencer. That score is 8-6 to six in favor of Holland. 
and uh, Fujisawa and uh, Gim are playing right now. It is six to five in favor of Fujisawa, and they have played six ends. They are finishing up the seventh right now. So that'll do it for us here, unless we're going to cut over to sheet six. Are we cutting over to sheet six? Just trying to hear. From okay, so we're going to take a look here at sheet number six here for just a second here, and keep calling. Why not, eh? Why not? Why yeah. not? Take Amber just made game. a really nice come around draw to sit on top of her other one there in the middle. Navigated that tight port. So put Spencer in a little bit of trouble. So unfortunately we do not have the top down view for this side for this part of the game here because we have to make some camera changes here. But we can show you this view and we will show you the top down view from the other side. So we will have uh, end number eight when we come back uh, after this end is complete. We will have that top down view. Final rock here for, pardon me, uh, first skip stone for Spencer here. Well, I've noticed that uh, in this game, there's been a lot of rocks in play every end. Um, and a lot of great shots being made as well. I missed the call there. Were they trying to hit that? Top guard or come in off that one? I'm not sure what the call was. I, I didn't quite see it, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure if she was just trying to uh, over curl it and run it into, uh, into those blues. On sheet seven, um, we have a tie game. Uh, six six coming home last end with um, Fujisawa has hammer. And on sheet three, it looks like Lou is uh, sitting um, or is looking against uh, four uh, Kona rocks. We're on thirds last over there, so an interesting end forming. Amber Holland here looking to um, to hit this yellow and roll in uh, to the other two blues there. going down to take another look at the angles here just making sure they don't leave anything for Spencer Just making sure that they they don't leave anything. Amber's such a good player, our 2011 Scotties champ. She knows the game really well. Yeah, we played her our uh, first game here um, in Portage. Yeah. And it was uh, it was a close game. Game. Yeah. I 
think Amber kind of just changed her shot here. It's just going to throw up another guard so he doesn't leave her that uh, run back or to eliminate those two blues that are in really great spots. Yeah, she played the shot on her first one, so she'll have a really good idea what the path is doing. Holland with her last rock here of the seventh end. Oh, I think she's coming in. Just going to put another one in there. Opportunity now to just slide another one in. So oh, she is sitting really three. Great, great shot. This here could be do or die for Team Spencer. On sheet three, um, Lou made a really nice uh, hit through uh, two little ports um, to uh, sit second shot. And uh, Quona's got to try and get that out to sit three. Um, it's a really tough shot for her. So Spencer looking at all the options and angles here. Yeah, the angles aren't really uh, in favor for Team Spencer here. It's tough to see from our angle. I'm not sure if she hits the, the outside of that wide yellow one, if it'll send the other one into where they need it to go or not. Yeah, because of that really uh, high yellow there, it blocks her draw to the, to the button. So final rock here for Spencer. <laughs> and his handshakes for Kawana and Lou. And Lou will pick up the victory on sheet number three. So Yeah, they shut down the comeback over there, I thought. Thought something was brewing, but a uh, great shot there on her first to take the steal away and just followed through. Spencer here with her final stone of the end. One, two. Hard to say if she spun that in for shot rock. Yeah, at least to only give up a steal of one, I think. So they will play one more end. We will take a short break here as they reset. You're watching the 2018 Canada Inns Women's Classic live from the Portage Curling Club.
And we're back from the Portage Curling Club, and we just switched over to sheet number six to show you the final here between Holland and Spencer. And Holland would steal one in the seventh end to take a nine to six lead. So Spencer will have to be on full offense here in this end in order to try to stay in this game. And next door on sheet seven, we have a tied game, 6-6, uh, six, six, and Fujisawa doing a great job of uh, keeping it open here. The, there's not a rock in play. Uh, Gim just trying to generate anything over there. And the winner of the game we're currently watching right here, Holland and Spencer, will play Fujisawa Gim, the winner of that game, um, in our feature match at 8.30. So uh, don't go too far. We'll be back with that game right after this. So in our game here, you can see the sweepers just trying to start some offense by putting up a corner guard. Yeah, they can get a couple of guards up here and generate their three. Another benefit of the five rock rule. Holland happy here with the rock just biting the 12 foot would be great. team here putting up another corner guard trying to generate three points and once again we see Holland just throwing stuff up on the center line On uh, sheet seven, there's uh, pretty wide open. Uh, Fujisawa just has to uh, nose this rock. Um, still has two more rocks to come, but there's no guards in play. It's looking pretty good for Fujisawa. On our sheet, uh, there is a three-point lead, so... Holland, of course, has two rocks already in the rings. They're leading by three, and this leaves Spencer with the... Now it's time to start putting some rocks maybe into play, into the house. Yeah, I think that last one for Holland came up a little bit shorter than what they were wanting to. I think Amber called it in the house, so that might help Spencer generate, generate some points here. But, yeah, definitely have to bring play into the house now and get Land some points. They're just trying to move these two around and bump them behind the D-line. I want to stick around on this, though. And they get a biter out of it and a rock <laughs> behind the T-line, so not a bad shot. Yeah, really good result there. Can definitely use that. The Spencer team is uh, mother... Uh, Mother playing with her three daughters, uh, which is pretty uh, neat. You don't see that very often. 
Barb, Katie, Holly, and Allison Spencer, all from Winnipeg, Manitoba. And I believe Katie is now throwing uh, skip rocks, right? And Barb is calling the game. From what I've seen, I've seen uh, Katie uh, throwing uh, the last stone. Mm -hmm. Over on cheat seven, it is coming down to the final stone. So a hit and stick or a draw to the forefoot is the options here. I think Fujisawa is just trying to figure out which turn she wants to take for this hit, nose hit. You can see her here on our screen. She's just on the sheet beside ours and they're gonna make that final shot and it's a hit and stick, I believe. On our sheet here, Barb is just uh, maybe looking at just freezing, getting some uh, rocks in play here. As you can see, this is sheet seven. Hit and stick for Fujisawa. All she needs. And on the nose, that's a win for Fujisawa. She will take on the winner of the Holland Spencer game. I think Fujisawa qualified, I believe. And she plays, so Jim or Gim will play the winner of Holland or Spencer. I think so. I think that was a B qualifier, but I could be wrong. Couple nice peels from uh, Laura Strong here. Versus Spencer to make a nice hit and roll. Push some more rocks behind the T line that they can use. Getting a little late in the end though. Yeah, that was a nice, great hit and roll to cover that uh, one on the 12 foot. So a little correction here. So the winner of the Spencer Holland game will play the loser of the Gim Fujisawa. So Gim will play the winner of this game. Shot. Fantastic shot. Blue now sitting four stones in the house. Yeah, really nice double there. Good sweeping by the brushers. So at this point, every shot counts. Every shot is important.
Sweepers working at this one. The top one, a little bit of a jam, and the shooter rolls off to the side, so it looks like it is sitting fourth shot, perhaps. Yeah, really good weight on that. I think if they hit it in that place on the other side of the rock, it would have been a really good result. Just over curling a little bit. Holland just removing the stone. Black Blues in the house. Spencer needs to yeah, get into the Spencer here now has to make sure all three of her rocks are counting. And Still an opportunity here if they could utilize that corner guard and the one behind the T-line. Still need a mistake from Team Holland though, but got a little bit to work with here. Spencer, looking for a little bit of a hit and roll. One, she sticks around, so the shooter luckily sticks around, so they still have a bit of a hope. Amber's just going to want to make this one just go away, just throw a peel at it, and uh, don't uh, want to mess around with anything. So a hit on the right side there. So that'll be it. That's handshakes. All four sheets are complete. And we will take a short break. We will be back here in less than an hour for tonight's final draw from the 2018 Canadians Women's Classic. For my color team tonight, myself, thank you for joining us. And we'll see you back here in 50 minutes. Thanks for having us. Thank you, ladies.